Hey, this morning we want to talk about GameStop. It's January 27th. Um, we're going to go through this pretty quickly. What we're seeing here is the stock gets forced higher. Uh, is a combination of a coordinated, coordinated effort to buy the stock, but also margin calls. And margin calls are what occurs when somebody is short a stock and the stock goes much higher and creates large losses for a fund or a person and a bank comes along or the broker comes along and says, hey, you need to buy back this short stock position. It can happen if you own a stock and the stock crashes as well, but here we think if you just Google GME and margin call, you'll see there's a few funds that people think are pretty trapped here. One of those margin calls events we think happened earlier on the 25th from 10 a.m. You can see that GameStop went here around 90 bucks up to 135. We suspect this morning it's only 9 o'clock so the market's not open that there's going to be another margin call type event as the stock was up at one point over $300 this morning in pre-market trading. You can see it's up $100 right now. And so what likely happens is that whoever short the stock is being told they must cover immediately. And when they do that, they're taking big losses, right? They're locking in large losses and they need to generate cash using another part of their portfolio. And so as a result, what can happen and what's so interesting to see is that if you compare this to the S&P 500, you'll see that, we'll put this on a separate pane down here, um, that there's a correlation here. And what we mean by that is, if you're a big fund and you have a lot of different positions, your quick way to generate a cash in your portfolio is to sell all of your other holdings, right? Sell a chunk of all of your other holdings, and that can ultimately manifest in the price of S&P 500 stocks, right? Or the S&P 500 index. So you note here, we think this was a margin call, right? The stock went from $87 up to 145. Well, look what happened when this sold off, right? Well, look what happened if this was forced buying. Okay, they bought back and now they need to generate cash. Look at the timing of this, right? The sell-off in GME right here after the margin call is arguably done is a huge, very fast drop, 60 handles in the SPX in a matter of about, I think it was about 15 or 20 minutes here. So if you look at around 10.40 it started and it stopped at around 11 o'clock. And so this went from this large level up here and as a large level, if you look at our options analysis, 3,800 and 3,860, the market just was a vacuum and it, and it tanked immediately. And then look what happened. It kind of bought back up to the level before. So we think this was forced buying and then forced selling and then the market recovers. And so what's happening this morning pre-market is that the futures in the, in the indication of where this S&P 500 price is gonna open, this, this can be shown in spiders as well for those of you who can track spiders, is that the market right now is showing that it's gonna open somewhere down around here, 3,800 again. So again, we have this huge jump in GME game stock, uh, GameStop stock, and then the correlation is the big sell-off in the S&P 500, that you can look at that by spiders again. So if you're trying to figure out why the market is weak, the overall market is weak, look at GameStop and AMC is another one that's up quite a bit this morning. So turning quickly to the options market where a lot of this is happening, you can see here through our equity hub tool, which you can get to at spotgamma.com, we look at all the options data for you and we aggregate and tell you the key information that you need to know here. And so what you can see here is that there is a ton of open interest at the 200 strike which is which is labeled here and most of this open interest meaning 50 percent of that is expiring this friday which is the 29th so a lot of options that are in the money meaning that they are at a price that is lower than where the stock is currently trading are set to expire on the 29th and if you consider that most of these calls were bought by individual traders market makers are likely short those calls which means they need to buy stock to hedge so as we move to expiration on the 29th, dealers can possibly unwind their long stock hedge and that may pressure the stock lower now, uh, particularly um, once we have these uh, margin calls out of the way and these call options start to decay, we can maybe now see some pressure on the stock and see it now come back down to earth. Of course, if everybody and their brother goes back out and starts buying GameStop and buying higher strike calls that can keep this thing rolling, but there is now a lot of pressure on the stock to push this back down simply as a function of call options expiring. And so we may see the stock take you know, quite a pause, but again, it's up over you know, $100 just this morning. So I don't think that kind of movement would really shock anybody. But what, what you can really see here in these two lines is the orange line is a function of where all the puts are. So this is essentially a way of looking at what the put hedging exposure is for somebody and the, uh, that's somebody being dealers. And then the blue line is a 
is call gamma. This is where what the exposure is for market makers or dealers uh, related to calls. And so the stock is going to open somewhere over here, which is really going to create this blue line spiking up, which is implying that dealers have a lot more stock to buy as a hedge um, as the stock breaks really over this level 150, right? And so this blue line, uh, the gap between the blue line and the orange line is telling you that really it's call options that are making this thing and forcing the stock higher now. Um, and again, with margin calls and a lot of options decaying into Friday, we think that this could really take a pause pretty quickly and pretty violently uh, and the next week uh, very well may start again. Hope this, was, hope this was helpful. You can get to us on Twitter at SpotGamma or through SpotGamma.com. Thanks.